So today, Dr. Schultz, I want to talk about things that men can do after they've had surgery and maybe they're having some side effects. So first of all, can we go over some of the side effects that someone can get from a radical surgery? Well, this is a super important topic because if we had a non-toxic way to treat prostate cancer, it wouldn't be such an issue. Prostate cancer itself is generally very curable. The trouble is that in removing the prostate or in radiating the prostate, men can end up with real problems in their quality of life after the treatment. Loss of sexual ability or capacity to get normal erections, uh, leaking urine, and uh, in the old days with bad radiation, you could also have uh, rectal problems. Uh, I don't mean erectile problems, I mean rectal problems where defecation is an issue. So stakes are really high in this uh, whole discussion. And oftentimes people are so frightened by the disease, they don't really think about the repercussions of treatment. They just want to rush to treatment. But thankfully, most prostate cancers and practically all prostate cancers are very uh, low grade and you do have time to think about what you want to do before you make these irreversible decisions. But to address the question you're asking, uh, once people have had surgery, then um, there are things you can do to improve the chances of um, getting normal erections back after the operation. And uh, this is a issue that often isn't talked about by the surgeons. If I was a surgeon telling someone, uh, we're going to take your prostate out, we're going to cure you. Uh, there'll be a time afterwards when you uh, won't be able to get erections, but we, we're hopeful that at least half of you will get erections back over a period of uh, 6 to 18 months. Um, you say, okay, that's a reasonable price to pay for, for this getting rid of the cancer. If the surgeons were truly honest, they would say, and if you want to maximize your ability to get normal erections, you need to give an injection into your penis a couple times a week until the erections are happening spontaneously. How many people would still pick surgery? Uh, I mean, it sounds dreadful. And I'm not highlighting this issue of, of uh, erection recovery with injections just to scare people. It's really been shown in studies that people that will commit to doing that type of a process will have a much better chance of getting their erections back. Why is that? When people go through surgery, there's a shock that occurs to the nerves and men stop getting erections for this six to 18 month period before the shock wears off and the erections start coming back. But during that time, the muscles that cause normal erections atrophy through the absence of nighttime erections that all men, all healthy men get during the night. And that exercise program, God's exercise program to keep normal erectile function disappears and irreversible atrophy can set in. This can be reversed by undergoing injection therapy with uh, Trimix or prostaglandins. And this is all well understood in the impotence world, uh, but oftentimes not talked about, especially with the ease now of giving Viagra and Cialis pills. People just want to take a pill and the problem goes away. Pills don't work in the post surgical shock period. So it's very important for people who are about to undergo surgery to count the cost and say, okay, I'm gonna do an operation, but I have to commit to giving myself an injection in the penis twice a week after the surgery until things are restored. And uh, it sounds terrible giving an injection into such a sensitive area of the body, but honestly, when men learn how to do it, it functions well and if, of course, there are a lot of men that are doing this because they're permanently impotent and they get adequate, satisfying erections that work. So I don't want to try and intimidate people with the process, but it, it is something I'd like men to consider before they consider surgery. The part of the program that, that men need to consider is a regular program of injection therapy to uh, ensure that atrophy doesn't set in during the time, the shock period after the operation. So let's break this down a little bit. How quickly after surgery are men supposed to be injecting themselves? I would suggest starting within a week or two of the operation. Uh, men do not have to have intercourse. They don't have to use these in, uh, erections for any purpose sexual. 
They simply need to ensure that the normal erectile process is being maintained so that they don't uh, develop atrophy. So you mentioned twice, is that you know the minimum? Is that the, what needs to happen, the standard? It has never really been worked out as the, the optimal frequency for doing erections after the operation. But uh, I would say at least once a week, probably preferably twice a week. I don't think this is a normal protocol that urologists are giving men. Are they prescribing PNL injections after surgery, or is this something a patient would need to advocate for themselves for? I think they're going to have to advocate for themselves. I think the urologists who are surgeons and want their patients to have surgery are a little intimidated by the prospect of saying, well, if you do surgery, now you have to do an injections in the penis, I'm sure they rightly think that men are going to say, no, I'm going to do radiation. I don't want to deal with this. And so it, it doesn't come up. And then it's very hypocritical to start mentioning it after the operation. Well, by the way, I didn't tell you that you need to now start injection therapy because I didn't want to frighten you before the surgery that you're going to have to do it. But now I'm going to tell you this. And of course, they don't want to go there. They don't want to admit that they really were not totally forthcoming with what is required when you do prostate surgery. It doesn't come up. So if, if uh, patients don't advocate for themselves, this is gonna get swept under the rug, and a lot of men that could have recovered normal erections if they'd been sensible enough to do these injections won't get the benefit of this type of a program. Can you get these injections from your urologist or do you need to go to like a family doctor? Like if they don't want to talk to their urologist about it, can they go to their family doctor or they need to have that conversation with their urologist? Urologists are really the ones that are trained in how this is properly done. And I don't think that there'll be any pushback from the urologist if there's an energy and an impetus coming from the patient's side. I think that urologists are just reticent to broach the topic because it's it's a rather distasteful thought that you're going to have to do this this program. While it's very effective, uh, it's understandable that urologists don't want to uh, uh, intimidate people with this prospect. They just want to cure the cancer and and be done with the whole prospect. So does one need to continue to take Cialis or Viagra while doing the injections through that entire process? Well, there's certainly no harm in doing that, and there is evidence that the pills do help to some degree, but this whole diatribe on my part is based on the fact that I, I believe men are maximally motivated to recover their normal sexual function, and they're going to get much better and higher percentage likelihood of recovery if they pursue a program like I'm outlining. So is there anything that a man can do before surgery to help prepare for that or have a better outcome? Well, um, better outcomes are people who are fit, eating the right diet, not overweight. It's like getting prepared for an event and, uh, of course, continuing those things after the uh, operation, staying fit, eating the right diet. There is some sense that the uh, exercise so-called Kegel exercises, uh, which build up the sphincter muscle, may translate into better outcomes if you initiate that before surgery, uh, and then of course continue it after the surgery. But the overall idea of you're, you're embarking upon a, a big event when you have operations like this, it's, people want to minimize it, but it's a big operation. And the recovery is going to be better in healthy fit people than it is in people who don't pay attention to those things. So how long does it typically take for a man to regain spontaneous erections without injections? Does it, is it a, you know, a short-term process? Will he continue to have to do these injections throughout the rest of his life? Yes, absolutely. Uh, people do need to uh, stay on the injections until they're getting spontaneous recovery of erections without injections. That can be anywhere from two weeks to two years, uh, depending on the patient's age, the quality of the operation, their pre-existing functionality. It's, it's somewhat unpredictable and it really is just a, a commitment that men need to make if they're determined to try and get back to their baseline. Oftentimes something that kind of gets confused is the difference between function like potency versus libido. So obviously function is changing with the potency of being able to get a spontaneous erection after surgery. But does libido change at all? Well it, in theory it shouldn't. Uh, libido is driven more by testosterone men can be, in theory, interested in sexual activity even if they're unable to get an erection. In practice, however, I've learned that, uh, that it, uh, for most men, it's very intimidating to think about the prospect of sexual activity without the capacity to get an erection. So impotence suppresses libido. This uh, is not universal. Uh, some couples learn how to ha have lots of fun without uh, erections. But um, when I first got into this field and I started talking to men, I was rather surprised at how frequently 
the idea of uh, sexual activity without a normal erection is quite distasteful for most men. Maybe as I've gotten older, I can understand a little bit both sides of having a libido and not having a libido, but the, um, the component of normal erectile function in um, men being excited and engaging in sexual activity is super, super important. And uh, so many men will sign off on their, their sex lives if they lose the ability to get erections. So are these injections painful? Uh, no, they are not painful. Um, although we have had men comment that getting an erection after an extended period without an erection can be uncomfortable. Sort of like stretching out an arm that you hadn't used for a long time. But the, uh, the it's just a little tiny, quote, bee sting of a needle. And men do not complain at all about it once they get over the you know, the unpleasant thought of sticking needles in such sensitive areas of their body. Once men learn how to do it, they become very comfortable with the process. So today we talked about mitigating the side effects of surgery. This is a really big topic, but I think while we were filming this, one of the things that came to mind is the fact that you need to be fearless in asking your doctor questions maybe you're uncomfortable with. Maybe you bring somebody who can ask those questions for you. Write your questions down ahead of time. But whether it's penile injections or Cialis and Viagra or anything afterwards for care, this is your life and your doctors are really busy. Sometimes they don't have all the time to like sit down and explain everything to you. But if you're self-advocating, you're going to have much better outcomes coming out of those medical visits and that is extremely important for aftercare. So even if you're dealing with this now, maybe you just had surgery and you're watching this video and you're wondering what to do. Call your doctor's office, make those phone calls, advocate for yourself, talk to a nurse, get some answers and figure out the next steps for taking care of your specific needs. I understand when it comes to men's sexuality that there is a lot we don't talk about. But if you talk about it with your medical team, which is absolutely a safe space, you can get better outcomes for yourself and your family, maybe your partners, but even for your confidence, it's very important. If you need help here at PCRI, we have our helpline facilitators that are here. You can visit our website, pcri.org. They've been trained by our medical oncology team and can answer a lot of your questions. And don't forget to leave your topics and the questions that you have in the comment section below this video. This helps us deliver future content. And we are a 501c3, so if you'd like to donate and help our cause, our videos are being seen all around the world. And that's really exciting that we get to partner together with our audience to be able to really empower prostate cancer patients so they know what they need to know through this whole process. We thank you for trusting us. Please remember, from my heart to yours, you are not alone. Thank you.